Good evening, folks. How are we all? This fine m for me Monday evening. We're here. We have five pack. We have terrible microphone in the works, and uh, well, yeah, microphone's a microphone. I guess shouldn't complain, but I do need to send the other one back and get that sorted. So we're stuck with this old uh, thing. Not the greatest microphone, but it does the job. It works to some poor degree, and we have ourselves the capability of casting. As much as I like it or not, it is what it is. So, so first game up we have is going on a map I vaguely recognise, but can't remember if I've seen it before, it doesn't matter. It is a debt of Scardi, and we have a 7 versus 7 Kind of like a new battle, right? There's a lot of low-rated players. There's some couple of Joes in, in there as well, but um, actually probably like a low Joe with a couple of noobs thrown in for fun kind of game. Yeah, I get it. The noobs have to try and get their game somewhere, you know, maybe get some wins or losses, but hey, it is what it is, and it, what it is is game on. So this is Team 1 here on the left-hand side and Team 2 on the right, so let's introduce the players. So first off, starting on the solo down here because I'm going to point out this guy's done the wrong, very wrong build. Um, never start with your mixes, he's going to run out of energy. Yeah, so he's gone and built these massive reactors which take energy to build, then they use energy while they're active, then he's building a factory which also takes up energy and uses energy. So you see there he's wasting mass because he built four mass extractors then he went to the factory that is a complete and utter waste. So don't do this build order if you are learning. You should build the factory first then mass extractors and hydro if it's near enough but not really. So uh, anyway that's the first part of that is Jade Husky and he is zero rated so he is new we can forgive him that. The tutorial do tutorial in the game, the built-in tutorial, actually tells you to build these first. And there he's starting on power generators, which he is definitely going to need. Anyway, that is Jade Husky. He's is UEF, he's blue beside Jade Husky. We have Periosa. Periosa sounds like a charm from Harry Potter. Periosa is Aeon and they are purple beside Periosa in the midsection at Reganry. Reganry is Seraphim, he is grey. Above Reganry we have the Fool, and the Fool is Aeon, he's green beside Fool. We have our highest rated player for Team 1, it is Eden Luca. I'm not going to pronounce the J, it's going to be Eden Luca. It's Aeon in Burgundy, up on the top section on the tiny wee island here, it is Hard Poops. Hard Poops is Siren, first Siren of the game, and Hard Poops is in Kind of like an orangey brown kind of thing. Anyway, but the final player for Team One in the Middle Island, it is Amir Luca. So we actually have Eden Luca over there and Amir Luca over here, and Amir is pink and Amir is Seraphim and Amir is wandering away, a long way away. Forgot to mention the reclaim on the map. Ooh, lordy, that's a lot. Eighty-seven thousand reclaim. We have a couple of large. Rex ready to game. We have a huge lot of ice. All this ice is mass reclaim, and you can just grab as much as you want. And hey, why wouldn't you? But that's a lot to be had. Eighty-seven thousand ready to be up for grabs. Anyway, switch up now. Have an introduction to team number two. And here at the top side, it is Zoltatun. Zoltatun is Seraphim, and he is in vomit yellow. And here we have Troggy, and Troggy is the highest rated player for Team 2 at 1000. And Troggy is white, Troggy is Aeon, Troggy is already walking on his way over here by the look. Beside Troggy it is Cabita, Cabita is Cybran, Cabita is bright red. Now from Cabita we have N the Grand. Hello N, how are you doing? He's Cybran, and he bright yellow. Beside him it is Henry Wright 88404. It's going to be Henry from now on. Anyway, he is UEF, the only UEF player for Team 2, and he's in pale orange. Down on the bottom section is Zelos. Zelos is blue. Zelos is Aeon. Aeon. Zelos is getting a Team 2 Max upgrade already. Yeah, why not? And on the middle island for Team Number 2, it is Imperious Leader. And he's Cybran. He is Cyan. And we can land factory. Is that a misclick? Was that supposed to be air? 
I don't know, it seems unusual to have that many power generators and the hydro surrounding the land factory. I thought that'd be, yeah, because what land is there to go for? Bit of ground land. Anyway, you see here that, uh, as noted, there's a bit of a lower rated game. These guys were 1k, 900, lower. And what are they doing? Or what are they doing that the pros do? Reclaim. See, these guys, they've gone straight for the big reclaim when there is so much little reclaim. And yeah, but it's all worth grabbing. Don't ignore the big stuff. Everything's worth getting. It's all mass, it all pumps into your coffers. I mean, down here, we could have actually seen per Perioza build this factory on here. It says T2. Maybe that's T2 factory. Maybe it was a T2 factory, in which case he couldn't. But that's fine. You can just grab the mass instead. And I hear fighting somewhere. Yeah, yes, it was. So that was an engineer coming over from Mr. Troggy, and it got picked up by a couple of Selene, so. We see Mia is being defensive on that front. Throwing down some naval factories out here and he's going to get those up and running, popping out some units as quick as he can because he's going to need them. If he can get some frigates over here, they'll be able to put a damper on the Aurora spam, which will certainly make Mr. Troggy think twice about continuing to walk his commander over, but still. Actually, being Aeon gives him an advantage with this wreck here because that was... Hydro wreck, and I think that's a radar wreck. Yeah, so you've got a hydro wreck, got um, some pigeon wrecks, and a radar all Aeon. So Aeon units actually have an advantage because they've got some built in items they can start building right away. And looks like a bit of a drop with some air support coming over from Cabota, so maybe he wants to assist on this mid island and just help get a foothold. And speaking of footholds, we just about have a little more well, halfway down land factory for Regenry. And that could cause issues should Yuna start pouring out of that because he's not much on the ground for Imperius. Imperius has started up some navy over at the back here, like way over the back. A curious decision because navy could come right up into the bay here and cause some massive havoc. Got some exposed mass extractors there and this could cause problems. Alright, but... But I think most of the action is going to start out over here because we have landfall from Troggy and he's going for a walk and he's going to see what he can see. We do have some navy out from Amir and that's a frigate which could do well with coming around this way and knocking off these roars and in fact as soon as I say that away it goes. We see Troggy has been spotted and going to pick up a few shots from a frigate. No point doing that mate. You can shrug that off for ages. Really wants to get up that way and knock off the spam. It is shown on radar and you can see it now as well. So that will be incredibly useful. Frigate up here, kill off the auroras, help take out the numbers there as well. And yeah, some zooies around which are going to assist in taking those out. Curious decision from Troggy, what's he going for? Well, he's just going for a wander. And I wonder if he's actually going to grab this wall when he gets there. I'm very surprised to see this is still alive, but there we go, he is now on the reclaim wagon, and that's just free mass. That's just free mass. Alright, so Aurora's have made landfall with the... ...back here surviving, doing tiny little micro dances to take out the frigate. It is going to go down, but not before taking out eight. Virtually eight of those. We have a single saline here, nice and cloaked. So anything that comes on there, Emir is going to see all of. All right, checking out the other side of things, we have an island grab here by Zelos. It's going to be hard to hold if he doesn't get support. And if he doesn't get some navy on that, definitely going to want to get some navy on around to help in that. Hey, uh, hey, uh, good morning, Iger. I'm guessing it is 8 o'clock for you. Germany, right? of a few of my followers but yes um yep yeah. even for me you are quite right alrighty over here we see a single sub out from what's well, from the underground chasing down a frigate but it's going to run into a opposing sub and who's going to get the first shots off all critical one's got torpedo defense okay yeah this one one of them doesn't 
But they're going to ignore each other mostly, and this guy's going to carry on up here and go for the frigate. We see that Amir has his comm in residence. He needs to be careful. Because if he doesn't. If he gets kited. Well, there's no radar, so the Aurora's won't be able to see the comm until he's in range. A radar would make that a very deadly situation. And down here, we have Troggy doing a. <laughs> he's reclaiming the factories. No, I guess. This is actually my heads headset mic. Um. My main microphone is still balked, and I'm going to have to send it away. Yep, it's going to be sent under warranty. This is hilarious. Truggy has walked all the way up here and is reclaiming Amir's factories. There's a single sub going to town on him, but of course it's going to take forever and half a day for one sub to kill that guy off. And that is just... Oh, I find that highly amusing. Truggy is reclaiming factories there's just nothing to stop them all right we've got a bunch of subs here they could come over and they should come over in fact if there's a bit more teamwork going on you would see all of these come up this way and start having a go at Troggy he doesn't have a lot supporting his commander but the uh, reclaim on the factories is absolutely hilarious torpedo launches is what you should do Amir start burning torpedo launches and that will help shoot him out of the water and into the units, but I think his attention may be a little bit focused up this way. We have Aurora's trying to do a bit of a run by, but they're a bit too close to Thames, and Thames will come out on top of that battle every day, except if the Thames are static and the Aurora's keep on going. Right down here now, we can see it is Troggy and Amir just having a bump against each other. Not much more they can really do. Subs are going the wrong way. This way, pops some hurt on Troggy. If they can catch him out there. We've got some ground. Like, Amir could have walked onto land to help do some damage. Although his base is a wee bit in. Got some issues on that front. Warriors are being quite picky, looking at killing off a T2 mass extractor if they're left alone. Gonna knock that off at range, which will be absolutely awful. Uh, that we have some air hopping out now. Renegade up here is going to make short work of these guys. T2PD going up is not going to make it, I don't think. There's more Auroras in the mix, and Renegade is really good for taking out dodgy little Auroras. They can swipe and skim and twist all they want, but the uh, Renegade's AOE is just going to take them down. No dramas. T2 Mix does go down, so the Auroras finish those off. That is a shame, and Troggy actually gets away. So after all that, it was like a bit after all that, Troggy gets away. Could have been forced out much earlier with all these subs, so we're plenty there to throw down some hurt. And now we can see a poor little frigate, no torpedo defense whatsoever against that. It's just going to wander past four submarines and get an absolute beating. And now they chase him. He's not getting out of that one alive, I don't think, but this is some good pressure coming over from Troggy. Claimed a good section of the island, grabbing T2 on his comm. If he can get that up and pop down a forward base, it's going to be very hard to shift. Although we have some frigates coming down this way, and they're going to block off all of this Aurora spam. There's plenty of them. They could just absolutely perform a surgical cut, and there'd be nothing left for reinforcements, and those factories would be all she wrote. Getting there for Troggy. So if you can get that up, he'd be in a very good position, especially if he walks his come up this way. Could put down, slap down a bit of a forward base. Is that flat? Yes, it is. That would be ideal. Pop shield. Um, I'd say some anti-air, considering that there's a renegade floating around. A few renegades, actually, so they could be in trouble if he goes in on them. Have a few interceptors around. Well, he's got a couple. Just enough to be supportive. Uh, but now he's got problems of the frigate variety moving into his base. This does open a little bit of leeway for... Oh, wow. I completely missed this. Zoltun has been knocked out of the Navy game completely. Four factories down, and speaking of Navy versus nothing, we can see there is a single X just having some fun shooting at ground based targets. There's a defending infinity, should some torpedo bombers turn up, but Island is not for long. And this factory might start having some issues too, although a defending sub comes over from just to help knock these things down to survive. That is a T2 factory course, so uh, be popping out T2 units and T2 subs uh, looks like the name of the game. And speaking of T2, we're almost done here for Troggy, although 
There's still longer than time to go. Only 85, 85 percent done, but still must be stalling on something back here. And we see this roaming band of frigates still having fun. That is 18 kills for that guy. 7 on him, 3, 15. So these, this lot have had a good amount of fun. They cut off a bunch of roars. They cut off some engineers. They've gone to the bay here and did some damage as well. And this is Zelta Twin trying to get back into the Navy game. He kind of can't really because he's got frigates sitting in the way. He's got a small murder of subs there. We're going to have a go at killing off the enemy subs first, I would say. It would be a great idea. And then go for the frigates. Exactly what they're doing. And that is an arty. t 2 arty. Pretty good against Navy. Alright, the upgrade is finished for Troggy. And I don't know where he's going. Away from all this, I'd say. And that's no surprise there. I wouldn't want to stay with all that facing me either. Because that is a huge amount of land. And even if he pops down some T1 point defense, it's not going to last too long because there's a whole host of Zooey's cleaning things up. So, pop down a really quick gun upgrade. That is risky. If he can pull it off, it will help his chances. If Emir knew he was there, I don't think he'd get that chance, but Emir doesn't know he's there. And it is going up pretty damn quickly, actually. Look at that bar go. It's not going to be long for us done, but he's going to be standing still when Zooey's show up. No, the Zooey's have fallen back. It is just Thams, and once that gun upgrade's done, he's going to be absolutely fine. Throw some overcharges in, and he is a happy man. Still going for the water, though. Doesn't want to launch it too much. But, of course, the water has the issue of subs. So, kind of can't go in the water. Let's just stay away from those. Okay, down here we see this island has been cleaned out. Nothing left for Zelos. And now these guys are up here having to go at ground defenses. Because this... Oh my gosh, is that T2? That's T2. It looks like there was some raiding done. And there was some PD thrown down the front. And seems to block that off. Front. And Trogi now under attack from Renegades as well. Nisuke just intercepts in to stop that, and Nisuke just comes somewhere safe because I wouldn't say the water's safe. I wouldn't say the water's safe. Really not, but I imagine he'll get back out of the water once the renegades are done because. Oh dear. Cruisers! I can't stay in the water. Those subs will absolutely melt them. There's so many of them. A lot of damage. You can get some overcharges out though. Maybe get a rank of veracity, although he's already had one. Might take some time to get another. Needs to basically run away from all this. Though having said that, there's only one frigate left. And down into the red. And no more air, because that's an ASF, so his teammate has turned up with a Gemini just to help out. But uh, hovering over an Infinity class cruiser Never a great idea, they will murder uh, CFs quite happily. And Truggy down these two basically run. It has ripped back up to yellow, but there's a swarm of Zoobies coming his way, and he has his own swarm of Roarers, which I would be thinking be useful as a defensive screen against whatever's trying to chase his commander down. Uh, send them over this way might not work so much. There is some PD, there is uh, shield as well, helping that out. Of course, he's being a way for thin. Auroras will not last long. All right, have a quick check on the rest of the map. Okay, we see that Alto has pushed back out and claimed his island. We see some TT units down here sitting still. They're going to slowly die to attack missiles if they remain there. But it's all going on here at the moment, and that is actually an Ilshiver having a go at Troggy, so he's not going to have a good time. And he's been chased down by Zui. That's not great news for him. Up here we see a whole host of Aurora's. Yes, they did get in range, kind of, but T1 PD, T2 PD, and those just get obliterated. Alright, Troggy gets a rank of virus once he kills that poor hapless doing its best Ilshiva. And now uh, he keeps on moving back. 
And right now is a long trek to go. He's got to get into the water and walk way over here. And commanders are slow. And submarines are on the way. We need to get some counter work from Cabota. Cabota needs to get his units up there and support that. Do they have any idea what's coming? Well, they should do. There's sonar somewhere. Uh, I'll probably be turning around if I was struggle. I'll be sitting up here, slapping down a shield and some point events and trying to get some survival going on because the water is not his friend right now. Not with that many subs. He does have all this land spam, which is why I would choose the land option. I'd stay on there. Because, well, with land, at least the Aurora's can help. But right now, he has some major issues in the form of subs. They find him. He's a dead man. There's absolutely nothing to help out. There's no torpedo bombers. There's... The Navy down here from Cavita is quite static, it's not moving up to help him out, and he has been found. I think we're about to see our first ejection of the game, and it's going to be the highest rated player. It's going to be Troggy, because Cavita did not come up enough with his units to support. He needed to get a screen between himself, between Troggy and all these subs, but now it is too late, and we see Troggy. Bites the dust. Troggy throws out the GG, but he has been ejected first player on the 18 minute mark. He gone and unfortunately him ballsy play. It was absolutely hilarious to see his commander walk all the way up here. Reclaim the factories. And bugger off again. That's the um Without that, defense, without that torpedo defense though, without something going on there, he's always going to struggle. Up here we see a T2 HQ getting knocked down. So once again, Hard Poops raids on in and takes out the factories. Maybe it's just a regular T2, but another destroyer goes down. There is T2 HQ here. I imagine that's going to be focused up next. Although there's plenty of subs in the water and that might actually help keep things alive. Now the destroyer is gone. Though build power is getting knocked off the map quite happily. Alright, subs are trying. Half of them aren't even in range. They're not firing. Move a little bit closer. All of you, please. Oh, the pain. And then we see T2 Torpedo Launcher trying to be spammed up by some NGs. It does go up. It's not going to last long, though, because... Um, also, there's frigates up on top, and now the subs move in. And we see that dies off pretty darn quickly, just because of how much how many frigates there are. While the, the launcher does a lot of damage, they're not very cost effective, has to be said. It takes a lot to take out units and they just the range is too short. They're reasonable against T1 frigates, but not the greatest. And T1 are basically useless. Alright, that those frigates are gonna die off though. We have some T2 and T1 subs, well, say T2 was the destroyer. It's gonna have some fun murdering those guys down, but there's more coming, including T2 from Hard Poop, so he is not resting on his laurels. And that's actually a T2 ID. Well, what could that reach? Let's have a I can reach over here. It's a shame I can't reach over there. He's in radar though, he has no idea what's coming his way. Checking out the rest of the map, and down here we have a naval battle going on this way as well. It is Zalos and Henry having a fight against Periosa, who's just working on his own. And I don't think he's going to win that one. We have a few destroyers, we have... Ah, oh, sitting still's not a great plan. Especially against our destroyers, although these T2 subs are going to shoot them away quite well. Damage. All right, still have this little four base position here for Rig Riganry. I'm just gonna call him Regan. I'm tired of trying to pronounce Riganry. So it's just Regan, and he's just popping up some defenses there, popping up some artillery there. See some engineers doing reclaim there. They are. They don't really need to worry too much about it. Okay, so up top though, everything's going to custard. 
A whole bunch of zombies and they have taken out this full position. There was an artillery there of course and a shield and everything else but no more. Right, some Yenzies come in and they can basically blap a zoo in one shot. As long as they keep moving they will do great things. Um, maybe not the mobile missile launcher. Definitely the hover tanks, but not the mobile missile launcher. Alright, up here we've had some reinforcements coming from in the ground, just wanted to try and keep things alive, and they do. The T2 Naval Factory survives, which is kind of critical at this point. Going to need to stay in the T2 Navy game especially, as he's got these Salem's loitering. And that's a poor thing to do with the destroyer that's nearly dead. Wander into range of frigates, and it's going to go down. Okay, over here we have tech launchers. No kills yet for either of them, they're just building up some missiles. I do what they're actually in range of. Let's have a check. Uh, not a lot. Looks like maybe they're going to go for that island, but otherwise, nothing going. Down here we see a small navy build up from a Mr. Cabida. Cabida also sitting on T2 Navy, just building up a force unit, not really using it though. I feel like he probably should tell the So up here of course we have Zoltaton, he's doing his best with what he's got, trying to rebuild his navy, wants to get some engineers out and grab this reclaim. They're all assisting factories while he's well he's not stalling on mass I guess, but he could come out and grab some reclaim and start upgrading some of these anyway. In fact he is doing exactly that. And reclaim will help that finish off a lot, lot quicker. Okay, down the bottom, let's have a check on this naval battle, and we have, well, I'd say, there's only two destroyers in this mix, and there's a whole lot of destroyers over here. So I'm going to say that uh, this is going to go poorly for Imperiosa, and there's some T2 ID up here from Imperius. So Imperius, who he is in the Navy game over here, but he's also in the T2 RT game down here, putting up some defences at the back to help hold this position from any raids. But we have a zero from Cruiser, which can be an awful time yeah, with T2 RT. Right, and come more Yin well these Yin Zings actually belong to Amir. They are. So Amir's not actually in the Navy game at all either, he's kind of staying out of it. Getting an upgrade on this compliment, getting a res actually, so more resources and away go the... What are they even going for? Did they spot something? Absolutely nothing in range. I'm curious as what he's fired at, whether he's actually tried to have a go at the subs. Nope, maybe there was something there that moved, I don't know, but whatever it is, it's not there anymore. The Enzines run foul of a couple of destroyers, they're going to have a bad time with that, but there are more destroyers up here from hard poops at the moment. Poor old Zeltotons facing a 2 versus 1, it's getting no help, and those are strats coming in, and they're taking out his HQ. Last thing he needs is to lose his HQ. That is a terrible... Terrible time on that front. He needs his navy. Alright, strats are loitering around and we have some defending and signals from Eden. We have attacking us coming from in and here they go for a massive bombing run. And I just want to note how they all struck the same target. There are seven of these guys here. If they split their bombs accurately, like half their own half there, they could have taken out all of these. And one pass. Instead they come back, they focus down a single mass extractor again. They could have had all four down by now and then moved on to the TG power and that would have absolutely wrecked. There you go. As is they got they did do some damage of course and you know damage is damage and there's still a bunch of stuff dead. Nice down here we see that is actually Away from there. Oh, hello, Strats over here though, going down on Reganry, and he's standing right beside a T3 reactor that goes up and he goes boom. 
just caught that one in the nick of time as I was actually having a look at Green who joined the who was joining the Navy game. I saw the blue, the strats have come in and Regenry caught out not even a shield standing right beside a T3 P Gen. So as it exploded, so did he. And now uh, he is gone from the game. That little forward base here is kaput. Although we stuff up. Okay, what has that done to the battle down here? Well, not a lot. It's still a bit of a battle. We've got a bunch of one, two, three, four destroyers versus one, two, three. Or on this side as well, this Valiant's not going to last too long under that kind of bombardment. But neither of these guys are under the bombardment of tech missiles and a whole host of TTYD. So just have a look at that. No TMD, no support, and that poor engineer. Very rude, sir. I'm going to park yourself in range of those. That seems like so. Subs are out and they're going to help tickle down the numbers as well. Any damage is good damage. Stationary destroyers get doomed. Oh yeah, don't sit still. What happens? Sit still, you die. And still we have a very large... Holy heck, these are T3. So Cabot has actually got T3 Navy. He's rolling a na and a nuke. Okay, so Cabot's got T3 Navy. He's good at nuke launcher. Um... Don't see anything that's all done here for Jade. Uh, nothing really doing for Perios, although he's widely exposed. Get a few bombs on him and he'd be a dead man. Uh, stuff all over the place. It almost looks like an AI. It's got PD here, there, and here. We've got a flax sitting all over the place. And back here we have... Oh, we have... Well, we have an anti-nuke. So Eden has an SMD. He's had that for a while, judging by how far the missile is built, but he also has his own launcher. That is just starting. Oh, it's, oh whoa, it's got a nuke in the clip. I take that back. Although he just started, but that actually has a loaded nuke, so that could be fired at absolutely any time. We have to keep an eye out for that. We have nothing on the island over here for hard groups in regards to that type of thing. Still working on T2 Navy, is he? Just absolutely spitting out, trying to help over there. And here comes the scouting. And I'm going to wager that's a prelude to the new coming out. So Eden having a look at the grounds, which means he's going to spot that right there. And he's going to think, hmm, I don't want that to survive. Paying attention, he'll see it and he'll be like, nope. That right, nope. And no SMD, so that is a very, very viable kill it now kind of target with your nuke. Goes this way. Made a good choice. And it does. Uh, you need to evacuate there, Mr. Cavita. You need to. Right, effing now. I'm moving. Not moving. Oh dear, this is going to be a massive loss because he has this huge navy complete with a battleship. T3 navy down there, battleship there. He's even building a T3 sub. Yes, he is. That's a T3 sub, but he's not moving. And yes, he's going to lose this core part to his base, but if he had have walked away, he still had mixes here. He could have rebuilt power, but no. He's going to take a nuke to the face. Boom. Absolutely demolished. Could have lived through that. Honestly, he still had T3 reactor, he had some T3 mixes, he had T3 HQ engines there as well. But no. He stood still, took it to the face, and he's out of the game. But more importantly, this navy is out of the game. That was a huge navy with the battleship. There was really not much to contest against it. It could have romped all the way through here and destroyed so much. But now, it's gone, absolutely gone. And now Team 2 need to figure out something to counter off on that. Alrighty. That is having a look. 
Then we've got the fight going on down here. We spoke about T3. There's a summit. Nothing. No torpedo defense. No torpedoes. No nothing. Um, that looks like... What was that? Oh. Does destroy a fire. That battleship, if it stops, is going to eat a whole host of governor fire. Which, uh, maybe that's what it's doing. Moving straight in here to attack the governors. Nope, it's still turning sideways and wants to try and take out Eco. Actually, wants to try and take out the Eco all the way back here. A poor idea as soon as we see you have a look. Sis still has been taking torpedo fire all the time, taking destroyer fire, now taking all of those tech launchers as well. Battleship unaided dies a horrible death. Definitely want to keep T2 units in front of that. Alright, we have a swarm of T2 rolling on over bar, so they have a huge amount of flak for this exact eventuality. That is a, sorry, a crazy amount of flak. 16 flak in that group. Okay, I'll take it back. It's a massive group as it is. It's like 1 to 4 ratio of flak to units, and not a bad ratio if you are thinking that you're going to be Attacked. They are going straight over here. There are some engineers currently idle. Would do great to throw down some point fans, even a bunch of T1 here, right here, right now. Because they are steamrolling straight towards him, and he should be seeing that. Because the Omni sensor. Nobody's picking it, nobody's calling it out, so Imperius has probably got his focus elsewhere. And it really doesn't want to... Well, actually, I suppose if they do move up this way, they're not going to kill a lot. Yeah, there's this small bank here, but honestly, there's no factories or anything, and it's not going to be a huge loss should that go down. It's just going to be a loss of units, although there is a T3 mass extractor there, another one there, and another one being missed. There are some T3 engines up there which are not going to have a great time once all those turn up and of course if this will actually shift up north which is nothing that hard boobs have we have nuke number two out that is once again from oh he's got two nuke launchers now how rude so eden is doubling up on the nukes and where's this one going it is going down this way so it's either going to be heading in for imperius or it's going to be heading down here for zealous zealous did build an eastern it built two of them that's was a poor choice. But it, building a second one uses up mass, and of course you need mass to load the damn things, but he is evacuating his comm, and looks, I think he's evacuating wisely, that looks like it's coming straight for his base, and where is the SMD for Imperius? If you've had one nuke go out, you must build an SMD, honestly it should be the first thing you build. Wow, sorry, I'm just I'm amazed. But anyway, this nuke is going to land. That's going to be the end of poor Zealous' base. He's been under the cosh from the get-go. You know, he tried to get over here and claim this island as he needed to, but he got basically shuffled off that by Periosa. And that was the end of... Yeah, for him, and then he got pinned back in his base, had to be supported by his team to get that sorted. And where is your SMD? What are you building? This guy confuses me. Okay, up here we see... Wow. Yeah. That's a dangerous place to have an SMD right on the edge of the base there. Any navy could just wander and have a good go at it and it would be dead in a moment's notice. We see this has moved upwards, this little bit of spam, and running some TTPD. But Yenzin's very tough. They pack a sizable punch. Should they get in range, we have tax falling on in. You don't want to move through with their landing, which is uh, pretty much what the Yenzin's are doing. And the TMD goes down, although now we have more up here and we have some Vulthus out. So I think Zeltotun should be alright from this. And he's actually got T3 air, so he hasn't been idle. He's got himself into the T3 air game, and he is... got that loaded. 
doesn't want to store mass because as we all know stalling mass means nuke defense and nuke launches simply do not load going on and hello that's a satellite so jade husky in lieu of doing anything else had started to build a satellite comes down here under some shields so he's okay on that front Still, we have SMD there for Mr. Periosa. Periosa is also under shields, he'll be fine. And the question is, what is Team 2 going to do from here? Well, what they're not going to do is enjoy Flak in the face of Vulthus. That's what they're not going to do. And really, they want to push out some land units. Um, not too many left of the Enzines, although there's a couple still around. Back. Ground units. Alright, so decent navy from Henry's got a good section there, cleaning things up, and T2 is still in abundance all over the place. From Imperius, that's just going to lob shells out and damage things as they sit still within range. Never a clever idea. You can see them, and they're gonna fire. How inaccurate these cyber artillery is will it actually hit the target is the question. Well, oh, didn't hit that target, but hit that one good. Alright, Hard Drops is asking for a scout. My friend, you have air. Build your own goddamn scouts and send them over. Do it. Battleship. So we mentioned about how the precarious positioning of this SMD, and there we go. That battleship could take it out in like a silver or two. I wouldn't be shielding that. I'd be shielding right fucking here. Alright, Hard Poops is mentioning he has a second battleship almost ready, and yes he does. That's going to be a horrible time for good old Zaltaton. He's sticking with the T2 at the moment, not much more he can do. And he's got a huge amount of force he's facing up against. So hard to build. And another new going out. The question is, where's this one going? It is headed somewhere. Downward angle again. Um, possibly over here. I guess with the scouting of the satellite, they're going to know that there's no SMD. Well, there's the SMD. It has um got 10 health started to build it at some point but it ain't gonna last because if I'm guiding that correctly it's about to eat a nuke heavy up here is doing alright we see that they have been caught in range sitting still of all of this never a good time now oh, there we go nuke on down that is a massive Massive loss for Imperius. So these nukes are doing their work. One, two, three. So much ego destroyed. And moving in at the top as well. In comes the navy from hard poops. And there's a lot for them to kill. Really want to be submerging your destroyers about now, I think. They are just taking a lot of destroy fire and a lot of battleship fire they're not going to last long in this world and once those get in close we're going to see the sick end Deltraton's front base is now throwing down a shield gen a tier 3 shield generator right nuke is out and that is going for Zeltraton's base but he's going to be okay for this one because the nuke is a bit premature because the SMD still stands and it has a missile in it. Alright, where are those battleships? They're back here and they're starting to lob their shells out. We do have some torpedo defense back here. It's not going to last long, but it's going to last long enough to keep these units away for now, which means the nuke is going to arrive before the SMD is down. It's going to launch, and well, Zeltraton is going to be absolutely 100% safe from that nuke. The problem is, the nuke is not his problem. Well, 
it is destroyers, it is subs, it is battleships. And out come the Vulthus, and hello, there's actually not much in the way of flak to stop those. There are some floaty floaty flak, and subsurfacing. That's probably a poor idea with Vulthus right there, and the subs go back down again. Alright, but Yin Zines are coming on in, and they can make a absolute mashing of anything. Is that actually a destroyer stuck in the factory? Kind of looks like the factory's firing guns. But it's really not. And, well, Zeldstone trying to pop down some T2 ID. Maybe we'll think about some T1 PD because he has Yin Zines in the face. And uh, nothing really to stop them. In fact, here they go. I do hear. Sounds like a strategic. You the other down there. Very distinctive noise. And um, if these Yin Zins focused on Zeldstrom right now, he could be in a lot of trouble. Uh, additionally, I think the battleships are firing now as well. Yes, those are battleship rounds coming in, landing on them, taking them. Oh, yeah. Zeldstrom is having a really bad time with this. Down into the red. Battleships and the Enzines and a strap bomber. And down he goes. Got absolutely, <clears throat> absolutely overwhelmed there. Forces coming in from Amir. He had the battleships from Harpoops. He had the nuke coming in from Eden. He had well, that's a lot of stress actually. A lot of stress from Eden. If he picks up a target, it's going to be game over for them. And we have a single destroyer giving a great account of herself against a bunch of battleships. Not for long though. As soon as they range it, it's going to be horribly dead. And splat. Okay, there has been a monkey built. So in the grand has a monkey. If it can wander its way over here, it could do great things. We could see the end of Jade quite easily. Although having said that, there were all those strat bombers out. How many does he have? 24 strat bombers. I think he's okay. I think he can pick a target and I think he can kill it. Don't forget, he's still got two nukes. I think he's waiting for the second one to load so he can launch two at once. Hey, why wouldn't you? Overwhelm the SMD if there's just the one. And we see here satellite doing a thing, trying to take down the HQ. Take down the build power first. So satellites are pretty good against to kill off naval build power because of course you have engineers around the factory helping it and well, no shields you can't really build ground shields to help that out so kill off all the build power then kill the HQ works better than trying to kill the HQ up front right we actually have one two third nuke sub and hello is that finishing off a nuke inside the sub just waiting on launching. No, maybe not. I take that back. But it might have been, but it's just waiting to be able to launch another uh, tech missile. Down here, we do have a battleship from Henry, and that is good to go. We have the spider is on the way. It is its way inexorably slowly off to the left. The satellite second one is going up, sitting right here. Nice and happy. Right, air is coming in. Here goes the ASCFs from Eden. So hidden in all of the summit. There they are, the strats are behind all 24 of them. Maybe more by now. No, it's still 24 strats. Will they be seen? Will they be picked up? Or no. The air is distracted from in the ground and the strats get through and with the escorting ASCFs. This is not looking great. Where's this commander? Right here. Uh oh. No, oh, you're not under enough shields for that. Not under nearly enough shields. Here come the bombs. And here goes in grand. And uh, that monkey is going to die right there. I do wonder if perhaps the defensive satellite had softened that area up and Engrand Grand didn't realise, maybe he thought he was under more shields or something like that. Either way, definitely not enough to smite that onslaught. And 
there's still a large number of strats in the air. Amazing. I only lost a few of them. And uh, he's going to find another target somewhere. And bomb that instead. Question is who's left? Well, we see Zealous is in the water. We see Imperious Leaders in the water. And there's a nuke sub over there. We have an Atlantis just about built. That'd be handy for anti-navy tactics. In fact, it's going to finish up. And that'd be good. But where is Henry's com? Seeing him. Now I'm seeing him. Oh dear. Standing out in the open and any second now those are going to redirect. There they go. They found him. Bombs away. How's your face? It's bombed. No chance of dodging 20 Cybran T3 bombers. They have a massive AOE. They're the hardest straight bombs to dodge. Right. So what's left then? Um, it is Zelos. Just chilling with his comm and gets stunk by an Atlantis. Falls on his head. I just have Imperius down there and also well leave the siege tanks underwater. They got torpedoes. That'd be hilarious to use your siege tanks to kill a commander. It would be. But anyway, the galaxies have torpedoes as well and they're moving their way on in. They're just going to rock one up and kill basically everything. Quick to see torpedo bombers. Jade Husky has built an experimental. Is that another? Yeah, it's another satellite. Kind of redundant at this point, but you know. Right, now we just move on in. They're going to get work done because, well, nothing being built really. It's just a matter of time more than anything else. And Imperius trying to throw up a harm that will help his survivability for a little bit. But uh, when you've got siege tanks being aggressive, that's hilarious. And more subs coming in this way. Galaxy battleships. Are we going to have a go at the destroyer at least? Maybe. Harm, which sinks underwater as soon as it's completed, can help out, but. Extending, well, I say probably. It's definitely only extending. There's the torpedo bombers. They are on their way. And. Zellos is building a bunch of T1 anti air, and he's. I think it's not sure it's supposed to be an H or a K, but. Oh, it's an O. O U C H. Ouch. Ouch, indeed. It's going to be a shame, though, because uh, I don't know if he's going to get to finish those words, because as soon as these battleships come in range, or these destroyers, all of that's going to die, of course. Nonetheless, ouch is quite accurate. Imperius down here, trying to build some more. His commander is going to be in range of torpedoes. Going to be investigated for that. Of course, there we go, and those are actually Aeon Solaces. So a bit of texturing going on there. Because not oh, even was out. Ah, he borrowed. Borrowed Siren Tech. There we go, the ouch completes. The ouch is done. And it really does cause an ouch for the Solus bombers flying overhead. Unfortunately, it doesn't cause an ouch for the Galaxy class battleships. Let his out remain. And a nuke. Yeah, right. That's probably a massive overkill there. Shame his ouch couldn't remain. Still, in come the Solaces, and we are about to see Zellos go out of the game. Massive amounts of damage those things do. Beatles are slow to arrive, but when they do, it is just absolute destruction. There we go. Battleships, torpedo bombers, destroyers, and a nuke. See you later, Zellos. Alright, Frix. Game one. And also. <laughs> Righto. Rub it on my danger. So, this game will. I think it. Really. The death of Troggy up here, that had a probably more sizable impact. His demise 
left hard poops in a kind of an exposed situation really. He was trying to fight against the 2v1 on these two fronts, occasional attacks from other people and then Abita just standing still and taking a nuke to the face instead of getting out of there. Could have carried on, could have kept his navy, he still had eco but game is game. <laughs> 